welcome to Radiant Purpose. Uh, this is Simone, um, where basically we're talking about from Psalms 34 5. Those who look to Him are radiant, their faces are never covered with shame. And today, I'd like to share a little bit about our bodies. And um, I know a lot of the times we're talking about purpose and identity in these videos and just different topics um, on things that I'm learning about, things that a lot of us have either struggled with or dealt with um, in our relationships with the Lord. And I just felt like today would be a good day to just talk about health and bodies and um, just a few things from Scripture with that. So first... Um, Romans 12, 1 and 2 are good ones to start. And this is what they say. I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect and for me personally again um, in my journey I have definitely had issues with body image and self-esteem and even like eating disorders and all kinds of things like that when we're talking about um, our bodies but over time like the Lord has been so gracious to continue to just teach me and work with me and I think a lot of people um, can struggle in that area a lot of women kind of just whether it's going from up and down as far as like weight or it's not eating well or it's over overeating or exercising or obsessing over these things and so I think it's just so important to just encourage one another in that area um, I continue to get encouraged by other people um, that I see that are pursuing health not just spiritually but also just physically and continuing to you know try to do better in that area um so yeah I feel like Romans 12 1 and 2 are really awesome just when we're talking about bodies and thinking about like that our body really is a sacrifice that we can present to God and whether you're struggling um with eating too much or eating too little or maybe just starting back um, into exercise or getting healthy just to encourage you um, our bodies belong to God and that he wants to actually be involved in the process with us like I know for me I spent a lot of years in college teaching aerobics and doing things like that and then just kind of after I got married just kind of those things kind of just sunk down just different different jobs that I had and um just the seasons that I had in the past I wasn't taking as good care of myself physically and um, I could definitely see that just with you know hormonal balance with energy levels with all different things and so I feel like in the last few months um, the Lord's really just been impressing on my heart even as we moved here to Haiti like you've got to take better care of yourself physically mentally emotionally spiritually you've got to invest that time and make sure that you are caring for the body that I've given you because you only get one. <laughs> so that's just definitely one thing. Another verse that stood out to me when I was praying and thinking about our bodies and our health is 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. And it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. For you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And I love that scripture because, I mean, if you look at it in context, a little bit more is talking about, he starts out talking about food and what's lawful for you. And then he talks about sexual immorality and sinning against our bodies in that way. Um, but then at the end, he just kind of ties it up. And I feel like it kind of encompasses both of those things. Like our bodies are not our own. They're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so... A lot of the times, even asking ourselves those questions like, how am I glorifying God in my body with this decision? Like, is eating a ton of cookies or a ton of ice cream going to help <laughs> help me glorify God? And I am definitely not anti-sugar. Everybody knows that. I love sweets. I like a little dessert in moderation. That's how I, I grew up. My mom was not, you can't have any, you know, sugar or anything like that. But I just feel like, you know, sometimes just questioning are you depending on those things for other things like is it for emotional support or you know when you should be connected with people or you know just what are, just always asking yourselves questions and even how foods are making you feel because I know for me I'm realizing like certain foods do not 
really do that well with me anymore like certain like dairy and heavier foods and even like too much sugar like I just noticed my body starts to like reject those things or too much grease or fat and so just learning um, how your body works like some people never have really taken the time to discover like what foods your body actually craves and we were made to eat vegetables and fruits and I'll show you this water <laughs> and now that we're talking about that I just feel like again I'm just sharing from my heart and just on my personal journey I feel like even in the recent months or the past year like the biggest thing that has even helped me even more than changing diet or starting to exercise more has been drinking water and I have just been so encouraged to just really commit to just drinking enough water and I've even done like Facebook challenges where I've had people that have had me a part of a group um, to basically encourage each other to drink enough water and literally just doing that for 30 days I could see like a big difference of just committing to drinking more than enough water and most people are not getting enough water um, this thing right here is like a 20 ounce little thing and I try to get like five of those and so basically we're, we're a lot of us are dehydrated <laughs> and a lot of us are you know have maybe like fatigue mentally or you know you're feeling kind of sluggish and it's just like you need exercise you need water you need good food and I just feel like I'm I'm definitely continuing to learn that continuing to be on a journey of health and trying to get healthier and to be stronger and to you know take good care of my body but I just want to encourage you wherever you're at um, with your journey with health like drink some water I have a friend that has talked about that for years Patricia <laughs> she always talks about like sometimes you're not hungry but you're actually thirsty and I know you know others who've said that as well so just start to try to almost have your own experiment with with your body with your health and start to see like how is your body reacting to certain foods how is your body reacting when you actually exercise how is your body reacting when you drink you know a gallon of water a day or you know just different things like that and um start to make those small changes i'll try to do everything at once but just little by little and seeing the lord kind of just help you to actually um, achieve those those goals and those desires to be healthy the last thing that i i wanted to share and read and i know that it's some people might be like this is such a stretch girl you're stretching it when you're trying to read <laughs> read different scriptures and talking about health but this was just what I feel like the Lord laid on my heart um when I was thinking about water um I thought it started to think about the woman at the well um the woman the Samaritan woman that she's had an encounter with and I'm just going to read from John 4 7 through 15 and it says a woman from Samaria came to draw water Jesus said to her give me a drink for his disciples had gone away in the into the city to buy food the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. And I'm just going to stop there. The rest of the encounter is really um, beautiful, too, because, you know, Jesus just begins to tell her, like, her history. He, you know, speaks words of knowledge to her. Like, he knew her past. He knew everything that she had gone through. And he basically told her, like, literally that he was a son of God. And they have this beautiful encounter. And she is changed and transformed um, through knowing Jesus. Anyway, I know this is a stretch. But when I thought about actual physical water, I thought about that encounter. And how, for so many of us, 
Um, we are thirsty, literally, I think physically in our bodies, a majority of people that I meet are actually dehydrated and we're not getting enough water. And how that can be so symbolic of not getting enough of the Holy Spirit and the living water in Jesus. And so for me, it's almost like some of these reminders like there's a lot of correlations between like the physical and the spiritual and I feel like when we're dehydrated or when we are like weak in our bodies a lot of times those can be the same signals um in the spiritual where Jesus is like okay Simone like you are really really thirsty right now you need to drink some water and he's like but also you're not just thirsty for that physical water but you are actually thirsty for me and so just spend some time in my presence spend some time letting me fill you up and hydrate you physically and spiritually and emotionally and mentally and it's so like every time we come before the lord with whatever our request is whether it's i want to get healthier i want to lose weight i want to drink more water i you know for some single girls out there i want to get married for married women i would like to have a baby i want to do this you know like i want to start a business i want to do ministry i want to see my husband you know, his business flourish. I want to see my children, you know, come to know the Lord or walk with the Lord or, um, yeah, I want to write a book. I want, you know, like whatever it is, everybody's story looks different. I want to start a business, like whatever your story is and wherever you're at, it's like coming before the Lord and just allowing him to fill you up. Just like the way we get filled up on a meal, just like when we drink water it nourishes us like it's the same way with Jesus he wants to like nourish us in his presence he wants to change us and transform us and give us strength to just glorify him with everything that we have so thanks for listening thanks for watching I want to hear from you thank you for listening uh, to this video and for those of you who continue to just like it and share it or even comment um, tell me like where are you at like are you working towards any goals physically right now are you um thinking about health are you thinking about you know your your physical body and things that you can improve on um or if not there maybe something spiritual like how do you um see jesus as like living water and what's what's that looking like like your relationship with him i just want to hear from you and if there's anything to pray about or talk about whatever you want to share Thanks again for watching this video. Please feel free to share it with your friends. And you can look us up on Radiant Purpose on Facebook or RadiantPurpose.com. Stay radiant, stay beautiful. Talk to you next time.